Nations Consultants Association Limited against the Newspaper Licensing Agency and others. Lord Sumption will deliver the judgment in this case. Um, this appeal, although ostensibly about rather technical issues of copyright law and computer technology, uh, potentially affects many millions of ordinary users of the internet. Uh, images and text accessible on the internet uh, are frequently protected by copyright. If they've been uploaded by the copyright owner or somebody acting with his authority, uh, the copyright owner will usually be taken to have authorized people to view it. But that will not always be the case. Uh, moreover, copyright material is sometimes uploaded onto the internet without the consent of the copyright owner. Uh, in the ordinary way, uh, it is not a breach of copyright merely to view copyright material but only, to, but only to copy it. What is suggested in this case, however, is that merely viewing copyright material is an infringement if it is viewed on the internet, even though it would not be if it was viewed in physical form, for example, in a book. The reason uh, is that the technical processes involved in browsing the net involve the automatic generation of temporary copies at several stages. In particular, a copy will be temporarily made on the end user's computer screen and will stay there until the user switches off or moves to another web page. And another copy will be made on the internet cache in the hard disk, which will stay there until in the course of further internet use it is overlaid by other material. The internet cache is a universal feature of modern computer technology, which is essentially designed to free up capacity on the World Wide Web by allowing repeat access to the same web page from the cache instead. Of course, it is no part of the viewer's purpose in any of these cases to make these copies. Uh, it is simply the incidental consequence of his using a computer to view the material. Section 28A of the Copyright Design and Patent Act 1988 deals with this problem, at least in part. It is based on an earlier EU directive. Uh, we have dealt uh, with this issue by reference to the directive. Essentially, Article 5.1 of the directive provides that the copyright owner's exclusive right to authorise reproduction does not apply to what are called temporary acts of reproduction. Uh, that is defined as the making of copies which are transient or which are an incidental, integral and essential part of the technical processes involved in transmitting the material through a network such as the web or otherwise lawfully using it. The question comes before this court in relation to material extracted from newspapers, which is shown on the website of a commercial news monitoring service operated by the appellant's Meltwater. They make it available on the web to clients with password access to the relevant part of their website. Meltwater itself has a license from the newspaper publishers uh, to upload this material onto its website. The issue in the present case is whether Meltwater's customers who view it also need a license from the newspaper publishers on pain of being liable to them for infringement. The trial judge and the Court of Appeal held that they did. Uh, in their view, the exception in Article 5.1 of the directive did not apply to temporary copies generated in the user's computer in the course of internet viewing essentially because the copies were not made in the course of transmission through a network, but in the end user's computer, and because viewing material on the web did not constitute lawful use if the copyright owner had not consented. This reasoning can no longer be sustained as a result of decisions of the Court of Justice of the European Union after the courts below gave judgment in this case. The effect of these decisions is that a temporary copy may be lawful for the purposes of the directive, even without the copyright owner's consent, if it is otherwise in accordance with EU law. Uh, it does not necessarily follow, however, that the exception in Article 5.1 applies to such copies. The newspaper publisher's main argument is that the exception does not apply, essentially, they say, because it is well established uh, in the case law of the Court of Justice of the European Union that an image is temporary only if it is deleted automatically and not by the voluntary decision of the end user. The copies generated on screen and in the internet cache are not, it is said, temporary in this sense. They remain on the end user's screen for as long as the end user chooses to stay on that web page and because they stay in the internet cache for a period which depends at least partly on the end user's pattern of internet use, the capacity of his hard disk, and his default browser settings, all of which are variables within his control. 
The Supreme Court considers that this argument is wrong because the only requirement is that the image should be deleted automatically when the relevant technical process for which they were generated is complete. The process is complete when the end user moves away from the web page, the screen copy is automatically deleted at that point, and the cache copy is deleted at some point thereafter, which is the automatic consequence of continued browsing of other material. On any other view, the directive would not cover what appears from its recitals to be the very situation to which it was mainly addressed, namely the use of new media technology in its most widely used form, i.e. the internet. It would be unfortunate if the law were any different, uh, for if these temporary copies are infringements of copyright, many innocent people will be unwittingly incurring civil liability when they surf the net, merely by coming upon a page which happens to contain copyright material. Uh, it is no defense to an allegation of copyright for infringement that the infringement was unintentional. And the court has expressed its reasons for this conclusion in full, but it does not propose to make an order to that effect at this stage because it considers that the question should be referred first to the Court of Justice of the European Union. It is a question of considerable importance with transnational implications, which it is highly desirable to decide at a level which will bind all countries of the European Union. The view expressed in the Court's judgment today should therefore be regarded as provisional until the reference has been heard and determined and the matter has returned to the Court.